Folks, we have our last honoree uh, who has been inaugurated into our 2016 Hall of Fame. And uh, he thinks he's getting this without seeing. He's very much mistaken. Let me tell you about uh, a few months ago, someone sent me the videotape of the farewell ceremony attended by President Obama, the, the Secretary of Defense, and all the top brass, literally, uh, in the Pentagon at the retirement ceremony of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey. And he turned it into an Irish party, which is apparently is very much his uh, predilection to do, and which is why I see him singing along to everything here. But he reminds me of the great history of the Irish in the US Army. We have more Medal of Honor winners than any other nationality other than American. Uh, we put 250,000 soldiers from Ireland into the American Civil War on the side of the Union. Um, we fought in every battle of consequence, Vietnam, Iraq, you find Irish-American heroes. And I think fate, family, patriotism is what this man is about. And those are the three words I think about when I, when I read his resume, that uh, you see him around his grandchildren, you know that he had the highest military job in the entire United States, and yet you also find an incredible modesty about him. And just talking to him earlier today, he wants to know about you, he doesn't want to know about questions about him. And I think he represents the very best of that what I would call unequivocally the fighting Irish. He's here with his wife, Deanie, who he's been married to for how many years? Almost 40. Almost 40 years. Deanie deserves a medal. <laughs> <laughs> Deanie, you want to get to the Hall of Fame instead? <laughs> and it makes me very proud to welcome the just retired chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey. Ambassador and Patricia and other organizers of this terrific event, my fellow honorees, and President Clinton has departed, but this has been quite an extraordinary day for Dini and I. Um, you know, if, if uh, 40 years ago, 41 years ago, when I entered the military, or 39 years ago, when we were married, someone said that we would be honored in this way, I, I would have, it certainly wouldn't have been something I would have put a wager on, I'll tell you that. But we are honored to be here today, and I've been blessed to receive many, many awards, mo most of which weren't personal awards. Most of them were actually awards on behalf of the young one, men and women who we've been um, honored to represent for these many years. Last year, I, I received an award from Time Magazine, and I know the former editors here, the, and it, I was named one of the 100 most influential leaders of 2015. Now, the reason I mention that is when my staff came in and said, You've just been named one of the 100 most influential world leaders in 2015. I said, I'll oh, go on. That's not possible. They said, why not? I said, I'm not even one of the most influential people in my own house. <laughs> How could I possibly be one of the most influential leaders of the world? Like many of you, I reflect back on, on my ancestors. I'm the grandson of four Irish immigrants from Mayo, Donegal, Roscommon, and Sligo. Dini's the great-grandchild of, of immigrants from Cork, and Kerry. And if they ha hadn't been for them, none of us had been here. And by the way, that's the nature of our country, and I never allow myself to forget that. One vignette, I was sitting on the podium with, uh, on a dais like this with President Obama, Leon Panetta, and I. Panetta was leaving office. We had a parade for him. And as he walked off to be honored by the troops, President Obama leaned across to me. And when the president leans across, you pay attention, right? I mean, it's just one of the rules of the road. So he leaned across, because uh, Panetta had been sitting between us, and he leaned across and he said, can you believe the three of us are here? And that's all he said. And he'd ha he didn't have to say anything else, because I knew what he meant was African-American, Italian-American, Irish-American. And it was one of the most powerful moments of my entire time with, with the president. And I often wonder, you know, my grandmother in Ellis Island, you know, standing there with her mandatory one suitcase and a couple of Polish fellas behind, you know, chatting it up. And I'm just guessing she turned around at one point and said, you just pay attention now, because my grandson's going to be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> the truth is, that's only possible in America, really. It's just only possible in America, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget this award today, and I just want to let you... I have to, I have to give you one, two other things. One is a, a Yates quote. President Clinton started it. 
Actually, my favorite Yeats quote is not from one of his poems, because he also wrote, he was quite an essayist as well. And he said, during the Troubles, he said, talent perceives differences, genius, unity. And boy, if that's not what we need, we need a little genius in our world today, just as President Clinton discussed. And last but not least, I actually think I'm being given this award for my singing ability, not for anything I've done. And I'm getting confirmation right here. So I'm going to sing a very short little Irish song. Some of you may not have ever heard it. That would be actually good because you wouldn't be inclined to sing along with me. No, I'm kidding. If you want to sing, if you have heard it and you want to sing along, I'd be happy to have you. It's by the High Kings. And I have to ask a question before I sing it, and that is this. Has anyone ever been anywhere in the world where you couldn't find an Irish pub? That's what I thought. Well, you're walking through a city street, and you could be in Peru, and you hear a distant calling, and you know it's meant for you. So you drop what you are doing, and you join the merry mob. And before you know just where you are, you're in an Irish pub. They've got one in Honolulu, they got one in Moscow too. They got four of them in Sydney, and a couple in Kathmandu. So whether you sing or pull a pint, you'll always have a job. Wherever you go around the world, you'll find an Irish pub. The design is fairly simple, and it usually works the same. You'll have Razor Houghton scoring in the Ireland-England game. And you'll know you're in an Irish pub the minute you're in the door. Because a couple of boys with barns will be murdering Christy Moore. They've got one in Honolulu. They got one in Moscow, too. They got four of them in Sydney and a couple in Kathmandu. So whether you sing or pull a pint, you'll always have a job. Wherever you go around the world, you'll find an Irish pub. The owner is Norwegian. The manager comes from Cork. And the lad that's holding up the bar says only idiots work. He was born and bred in Bolton, but his mammy's from Kildare. And he's gonna make his fortune and go home to County Clare. They've got one in Honolulu. They got one in Moscow, too. They got four of them in Sydney and a couple in Kathmandu. Now whether you sing or pull a pint, you'll always have a job. Wherever you go around the world, you'll find an Irish pub. Now it's time for me to go. I have to catch me train. So I'll leave you sitting at the bar to face the wind and rain. But I'll have that pint you owe me, because I'm not gone on the dry. When we meet next week in Sydney in the fields of Bath and Rye. They've got one in Honolulu. They got one in Moscow, too. They got four of them in Sydney and a couple in Kathmandu. So whether you sing or pull a pint, you'll always have a job. Wherever you go around the world, you'll find an Irish pub. Yeah.